Hi, my name is Ryan Langwish, and this is Ludo Lodge, a channel about creating content that sparks growth for game designers. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be continuing my series going through Tabletop Simulator and prototyping in Tabletop Simulator. Um, today, talking about custom cards. Now, in my overview and introduction video, I quickly touched on some of the um, process for importing a custom deck. Um, but I wanted to do a specific video to just make sure I covered kind of some of the, the caveats of it and how you might go um, kind of through the process of setting, setting your template up to actually import it into Tabletop Simulator. Um, so if we go into objects here, into components, either through cards or custom, you can get to the custom deck option. And so when I pull that out onto the table, I'm going to get some options here. And actually, Tabletop Simulator very recently, as of recording this, had an update that added um, an option here, um, which is the first one here, which is type, which says determines the shape of the cards. Um, so you now have the option that you can, um, you know, have standard rectangular cards with rounded edges or sharp edges, but you can now have um, cards that are hexagons, and you can also have um, circular or rather um, ellipse-shaped cards that'll basically, um, you know, if you import a rectangle, it's going to be like it cut out an oval um, that fit the dimensions of that rectangle. Um, I'm not going to walk through these specifically with the examples, um, but it's a nice option to have, especially because Tabletop Simulator has a lot of features around like what cards can do that other components can't, such as cards coming into your hand um, and some of kind of the dealing functionality. So if you had a game where players have hexes in their hand, maybe they're not cards in the physical version, maybe they're tiles or something, you may be able to implement it in a nice way um, by using this new type um, option in Tabletop Simulator. But if we go to the next option here, it's going to say face, which is going to be your image for all of the faces of your cards. And you're just going to be providing a single image here because it's going to be a grid of all the faces of your cards. Um, and so this, you're basically going to be selecting um, whatever whatever file has has that grid of your faces of cards. And I'm going to talk through a little bit of how you might use um, tools that Tabletop Simulator provides to create that in the first place. Um, but I'm just kind of going through an overview of the options here. So that's that. Unique backs is basically saying, do all the cards have the same back, or is does you know each card has a specific back that matches the specific front? If you don't have unique backs, then the back is just going to be a single image. That's the back of all the cards in your deck. If you do check unique backs, then you're going to provide a grid of cards very similar to face that exactly matches up one-to-one -one, um, with what should be the front and back of each card. Width and height here is basically defining what these grids that you um, uploaded are, what the dimensions are. So for example, the default here is a width of 10 and a height of 7. So that's saying that the image that you uploaded here, Tabletop Simulator should cut that into, you know, 10 columns and 7 rows. And if it makes those cuts, it's going to find all the individual cards. And so this is where it's important. If you leave it at 10 by 7, but you don't have, you know, the full 70 cards, or as we'll talk about, the last card is actually a hidden card. Um you need to make sure that you still do the size that's going to be the full grid because that's how it's going to cut it. And if you only have a portion of that grid, you know, so say say it was, I'm using a template that's a 10 by 7, but I only fill the first four rows. If I change this to say that my height is 4 instead of 7, it's going to do weird things because it's not going to cut those first four rows. It's going to cut the entire image into fourths um, and make those the cards. Um, so this is just defining, you know, matching whatever your grid happened to be. Number is the total number of cards. And so um, that's important if, like, my grid, like I said, I could be using a grid that's in the template for 70 cards, but I'm only using a portion of it. I would want the number to match just what I'm using so that I don't import all of those um, extra spaces that I'm not actually um, using at that point. Um, sideways is kind of telling you is are your cards meant to be viewed in portrait or in landscape? Um, and that doesn't matter for a lot of things because you can rotate them around in Tabletop Simulator. But there is the uh, Alt keyboard shortcut to zoom, 
which when you do that, it's going to zoom according to this option. So if it's a card that should be viewed portrait, you don't want to check that. And if it should be landscape, then you want to check this so that when you zoom, you get to view it the correct way instead of having it being rotated. Um, back as hidden is just saying, um, should it use that, like I said, if you have this 10 by 7 template, that last card, the bottom right card, is considered the hidden card. And that's true kind of whatever dimensions you do. And so by default, um, that's what it's going to use for hidden cards. So for example, cards that are in other players' hands, whatever's in that final spot, which, you know, in the example I do here is I'm just going to use a black, completely black card. Um, that's what other players would see. If you check this option, instead of using that hidden card um, in the bottom right of the grid, it's instead going to use the, uni uh, or rather, the, the whatever you have for the back. Um, so if you want the backs of the cards to show instead of whatever the hidden card, you could use this option. So we'll get into actually importing something here, but um, I want to talk a little bit about how might you go about creating, you know, because the main thing you need to create here is the file that's a single image that's a grid of all those cards. Um, and Tabletop Simulator actually provides a tool um, that allows you to do that. Um, you could do it on your own in any, you know, uh, image editing program, put all your cards in there. Um, but we're going to take a look at uh, what it provided here. So if we go over here and I have Steam open, and if I come over to Tabletop Simulator and I right click and go to Properties, I can go up to this tab Local Files and it has an option to browse local files. So that's just going to open up um, the Let's see here, the Explorer here for the specific folder where it keeps all of Tabletop Simulator's local files. Now I'm on Mac right now. This process should be very, very similar um, for Windows as far as opening, opening that up. Um, but in here, you're gonna find this modding folder that's gonna have a few things in it. And we're specifically interested in two of them, which is the deck builder and deck templates. So let's first take a look at deck templates. This actually just has um, an example image um, that's showing you kind of how you might configure the cards. So, you know, here's the, the 10 by 7 example, and you could just pull your cards in here and cover up all these, um, and, you you know, it's going to be in the right configuration. So it's kind of just showing you how to approach that. Um, you know, if you wanted to have square cards, you might do something like this. Um, in all their examples and their templates, they always use 70, um, in my experience, it gives you that option to change the width and the height, so you don't have to do that. I've imported, you know, a deck of 15 where I did three rows of five, um, and that kind of just depends how you're creating this image and um, what, how, how you're wanting to go about it. Um, but this other folder here is Deck Builder, which when I was looking at their documentation online, it gave the strong impression that this wasn't going to work on Mac, but I went ahead and tried it. And it seems to work fine. It, um, you just need the, you know, the latest version of Java installed, and you should be able to open this jar file. And so when I double click this guy, um, it's going to open kind of the simple little Java app that's going to make it really quite easy um, to create that grid, assuming that you have images of the individual cards. So you know, I, I actually have a folder of the example I'm going to use of a bunch of individual cards. Um, Let's see, is it hiding behind here? Okay, so once it's open, you might see something like this. Um, and I basically want to say I want to create a new deck, which is going to open a new tab here. I can close this tab that obviously isn't able to load their welcome page anymore. Um, and it's just giving me the opportunity to drag image files here. And so I have this folder here of room cards. This is from a recent um, co-design that I worked on for a contest. And I have 24 cards here. And what's cool is if I, I can just grab them all and throw them in here. And it's going to automatically figure out what the card size is based on what the individual things are. So it knows each of those images was 750 by 1050. It tells me there's 24 cards. And we're very, very zoomed in here at this point. Um, if I go to view, I can at least zoom out a little bit. Um, but we can see here, it basically put them into a grid, and it put them specifically into a 10 by 7 grid. So they're, they're 10 across, um, and so my 24 cards, if I sc 
scroll down here, have the four at the end, and then everything else, because I only had 24 of the of the 70 cards, is just filled in with black. Um, so it's going to end up using black for the hidden card. Um, so that's really easy, right? I just throw it right in here, and there, there it is. All I have to do now is go to Export Deck. Um, it's going to tell me what the um, size is going to be when I export. It does say that the recommended export size is smaller than 5,000 by 5,000. Um, in my experience, you can it can still work even if you're above that. But if you do run into issues, if you run into, I think, the, the Java app will actually say it ran out of memory or something, you may just want to try again um, and change it to a smaller um, image size. Uh, so I'm just going to click Export. It's going to give me an option of where I want to save that. Um, I'm going to save this just, I'll say, Tabletop Simulator Cards to my desktop. And I'm going to save it. So wait a second while that exports. Um, and now I actually personally haven't used this tool a lot um, just because I typically for these types of cards use this program called Nandec. Um, and I have it set up that the way it exports out of there is already um, in the format to get loaded into Tabletop Simulator. Um, and I'll, I'll probably in the future do some um, tutorials on Nandec and some of that process. Um, but this is a really easy way um, with this tool to just throw your cards in without having to like manually go into the image editor and like you know look at it pixel by pixel to make sure you're winding everything up right. Okay, so it took a little bit probably because Tabletop Simulator is running, but it says deck exported successfully, and I can see now on my desktop I can open up TTS cards, um, and it's this nice image that's configured exactly how Tabletop Simulator is going to want. Um, so let's close all this now. We won't save, and we're going to head on back into Tabletop Simulator, and we are going to load that. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to say TTS cards. That's going to be my um, the fronts of my cards. Then for the backs, I'm just going to use this generic card back image I have, um, and then I want 10 by 7 because that tool specifically put it in rows of 10 and seven rows. And then the number of cards, I specifically had 24 cards in this instance. So I'm going to tell it 24. Um, these cards are in portrait, so I don't want it sideways, and I'm not going to use back as hidden. So I'm going to click import. I'm going to wait a second. And it's going to import the deck here basically face down. So we're seeing the, uh, the back sides of it. Okay, so if we look at this now, it's going to... Um, we have our cards, and we got the different things on them and just have these as the backs um, and that's exactly what we wanted. Um, so that's an example of how you know you, we put them in the images of the deck builder, we got that grid out and then we threw it through the tabletop simulator load. And so that's going to cover most cases of how you would want to import cards but let's real quick do an example um, if I wanted to do double sided cards, so ones that have unique backs. And so we'd follow the similar process, say we want a custom deck um, and here, so, so those 24 images I have in the uh, game that they're actually for, it actually is 12 double-sided cards. Um, and so I earlier um, used that tool to export the first 12 in an image as the front and the second 12 in, it, as in the image as the back. So I can actually show you that real quick. So I've got the front cards here. Um, that just have the 12. It's still the full 70 because that's how that tool exports it. And then the back cards here are the different ones but in that same configuration. Um, so if I come back to Tabletop Simulator and I load in the front cards as my faces and then I say I want unique backs now because I'm going to provide a grid to be the backs of the cards and I'm going to say back cards. Load that. Still 10 by 7. That would only be different if we change the dimensions of that grid. Um, but here it's now 12 cards, right, instead of 24. Um, so we're going to say 12, nothing different on these, and we're going to import. Okay, so we have here now our deck of cards, um, and we can see that they are double-sided, which is what we want. Um, and it specifically matched up like here I have one north is matched with one north That's exactly how I had them ordered in each of those files um, And that's how you do double-sided cards um, So pretty easy. I mean the main thing is really the setup of and, and you know you can think if you're iterating on the game um, Kind of like streamlining your workflow so that you're able to make changes and get them into tabletop simulator um, more easily 
Um, but this should give you what you need to kind of kind of work with cards and get them into Tabletop Simulator. Um, one last little kind of tip um, that comes kind of from the Tabletop Simulator documentation as a recommend, recommendation um, is just for the uh, optimization and performance of loading of cards into Tabletop Simulator. Um, it's good to know that you kind of want to load as many cards in a single sheet as possible. So say, for example, you had a game that had several different decks of cards. You know, this deck has 10 cards, this other deck has 12 cards, and, you know, I could import those in each as their own grid, right? Like, I could have a grid for deck one, I could have a grid for deck two. But what would actually be more efficient um, in how it's going to load in all those images would be to lump those decks into a single image. So you're going to load it as a single deck, and then once it's in Tabletop Simulator, separate them out um, into different decks. Now, depending on, you know, what the backs are and, and how all that works, that may not be um, an approach that's going to make sense. Um, but I thought it's worth mentioning in this video that is kind of the the recommendation um, rather than having a lot of big sheets that are loaded where only a small portion of, of that uh, grid is being used. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you enjoy this video, consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing. I'm definitely going to be putting out more content like this. Um, if you haven't seen the other videos in the series, I've linked the playlist in the description below, so you can take a look at that as well. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.